This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, in red it says Alex, it says the Ramble in white, it must be Alex and the Ramble, going until midnight tonight, and hello uh, to all of you uh, here on a uh, Wednesday, we're not doing Wednesday through Fridays for the time being, because I'm tired all the time, and I'm just, I don't know, I, I have no idea what's wrong with me, uh, but uh, I'll be dead soon, I'm sure, so... What the hell? Anyway, um, uh, let me see here. Anything else I want to talk to you about? No. I guess, you know, this is uh, this is the first day of the week. And on the first day of the week, we get together and uh, go check out uh, uh, a guy by the name of uh, Phil Meyer. But first, let me just uh, bring him in here. There we go. And uh, here's, um, here's uh, let me see here. Well, there's his name. I got it there. Come on, Phil. There we go. There's Phil Meyer. Oh, hi there, Phil. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Let me get rid of some of these people up here who are waiting. And uh, let me see here. What else do I need to do? Now oh, that's about it. Oh, I know what I need to do. You know what I didn't uh, didn't do here? Uh, what did you do? Uh, what didn't I do? I didn't do this. See, so everybody knows who I'm talking to. There we go. See, there we go. Phil Meyer. I don't see that on Zoom, but uh, uh, anyway, yeah. uh, let's see. Everything's working. All right. Uh, hey, I looked up. Well, first of all, uh, mm -hmm. do you have any comments on uh, comedian Mort Saul passing away? He was, uh, you know, a fixture in Mill Valley at the Throckmorton. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, believe it or not, have never met. I don't think I've ever met Mort Saul. Neither have I, but yeah. uh, I know that Larry Brown. Uh, yeah, you know, very close to him. Yeah. And uh, uh, do you know why he passed away, or uh, uh, lack of breathing? Yeah. <laughs> Other than being ninety-four, I mean, everybody says, "Why? How did he die?" And you go, hmm, "Does that matter?" You know. Yeah. Do you know in Russia, in Russian journalism, they don't list how somebody died? That's because everybody dies by gunshot. I knew you would make a joke like that, but no, the reason is it's not considered proper to ask. Really? Yeah, in the culture. Yeah. Proper. Yeah, so, yeah. Let's see. Uh, but I mean, I'm tired. You do all the talking. No, thanks a lot. <laughs> People don't want to hear me talk. You know, they. I'm tired they, all the time. I'm just tired all the time. You know? Uh, yeah, I, I do know. Uh, Although I am not as tired now that I'm doing this street, a very strenuous exercise. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's helped me. Uh, I'm, I don't sleep as much because mm -hmm. I get up at four in the morning to go to the gym three days a week. At right. Five. But um, no, I'm not, I'm not as tired. I have more energy. And, uh, you know, there are, there are guys that are even older than me in this class. And uh, I, I'm amazed by the strength. Okay, of enough of talking about you and your working out. <laughs> okay. Uh, you should have started so, doing that years ago, you know. No, no I know. It, it, it's amazing. And just, just the warm-up. Don't worry. Is, don't worry. I'm counting the days. We're all, we all have a pool on how long this is going to last. Uh, well... Uh, I, the guy who's the yeah. coach, yeah, uh, you live in fear of this guy. Uh, you know, he's he's uh, uh, he's like a he's a weightlifting monster, and if you don't show up, you're out. And what is if, the, what is the name of the gym? Uh, Diablo Barbell. Diablo so, Barbell. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Okay. Diablo hyphen Barbell dot com. Okay. And, they uh, they train e elite power lifters, which I am not uh, doing any. Uh, 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 I doubt if you will ever fall into that category. Never, ever. Uh, but I'm doing the um, 
uh, what do they call it, uh, where you push things around and you pull things. Uh, uh, you pull muscle, you pull your groin, you pull a hernia. Yeah, I know those things. Yeah. Well, I'm, pu uh, I'm pulling stuff all the time. You know, I actually get aches and pains and I'm not even working out. That's why. You know, no, I, I at my arm, there's something with my arm that I got in the last couple of days. It was like I threw it out or something. And I don't know how I threw it out. I didn't use it. Yeah. Well, you know, your muscles atrophy if you don't use them. Yeah. And uh, yeah, this, uh, yeah. So anyway, this has been one of the best things I've done in years. And I really feel like uh, it's, it's turning my life around. Uh, as, as well as the diet, which has been a really hard thing for me to stick to. Uh, but I feel so much better when I I would, I would have no trouble sticking to a diet if it weren't that I didn't live with somebody. You uh, know? Yeah, my significant other is not doing me any favors. Yeah, I know. You know? Well, Marjorie, she'll make me see. Guess what we're having tonight? What? Pea soup. Yeah. And okay. Oh, my... yeah, low-carb pea soup. Mm -hmm. To begin with, pea soup is just the worst for carbohydrates, okay, well, that you can make. And secondly, that night I went to bed and I couldn't stop farting. And I know, had stomach problems and couldn't sleep that night, you know. Uh, President Trump says that he doesn't like being peed on, uh, if, uh, if, if you heard him at his rally. And, uh, you know, maybe that's the kind of pea soup you need. He doesn't. Did he actually say that at a rally? That's what it was reported that he said. Yes. No, but did he say that? It was reported that he said that. No, I know I it was reported that he said that, but did he say that? Uh, I don't. I didn't hear him say it because I didn't hear the rally, but uh, I did hear what was reported. Because I'm sure that if he had said that, it would be a constant joke on Saturday Night Live. Oh, give them time. They're they're you know forty years behind. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Popping. Hmm. Mike, Mike popping. No, no, but you still have that problem where you're you know if I if I talk while you're talking, you completely dump. I sent you something that I looked up on the web a few minutes ago about uh, about that, and mm -hmm. other people are having that problem too, and they said that it's in the. Uh, host settings. Uh, read the little ditty. It's probably full of shit. It's, it's but, in the uh, host settings? How come it doesn't happen to anybody else who calls except you? Uh, it, it, it's weird. This is what they said. It doesn't happen to anybody else but these guys. So, uh, and hmm. they have no idea why they said it. They, one guy said it had something to do with the host settings about suppressing audio. I uh, always take off all my audio suppression stuff. Yeah. I, I don't like audio suppression, yeah. you know, so I, I don't do it. I don't, I don't like First Amendment suppression either. But, right, uh, right, right, right. So anyway, so uh, what, what's, what, what have you been, what, what's been in the news that's been uh, interesting to you? Anything? Uh, yeah. Um, Although, if I would write these things down, mm -hmm. it would be a lot easier for me to tell you what they are. Uh, you know, uh, there, uh, there's all sorts of investigations. Uh, this uh, with um, uh, the school board uh, and the DOJ going after parents mm -hmm. that, uh, and calling them uh, terrorists for speaking up at school boards and disagreeing with... Well, uh, no, the, have you been seeing some of those school boards and what they've been doing and how they've been doing it? Well, one of them was a guy whose daughter was raped. And, no, no, no. Uh, if, I, you can always find an exception to the rule, but th these people uh, have been doing, have been going to these meetings and just disrupting them. I mean, you, no one minds somebody having a different opinion, Okay. But they do mind the fact that these people disrupt it completely, you know. Uh, I, I, I'm not so sure that... Have, uh, you, that seen, that was, have you seen them? Uh, I've seen the clips that they play. Oh, the oh and where did you see those clips? Well, where else would I see them? Of course, and they're going to play the ones of the people who are, who are just protesting something. But there are some people that go in there and just make a big deal out of it you know and 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 dis attempt to disrupt the meeting 
Well, this this one guy and the and the cops dove on him. Uh, he he was um, his daughter was raped by in a uh, by a transgender. Oh God. Uh, who you, was you? Okay. Do you believe the story? Yeah. Why? Why not? I mean, uh, but and, why and necessarily? You're just taking it out of whole cloth. You're saying I want to believe this. So okay, his daughter got raped by a transgender. Yes, but they moved that student who uh, who was the rapist to another school, and he raped someone else. Uh, and so, and they and the school board covered it up because they again, were having, again, where did you get this information? Uh, I got it from a very reliable source. Which one? <laughs> The Fox News. Was it Fox News or was it uh, one of the other ones? It was Fox News. It was Fox News. Fox News never lies, right? Uh, no, they don't lie. They never they never pick something out. They don't leave certain things out of this story. I mean, I'm not saying it didn't happen. Okay, yeah. you know that, that I'm not uh, going to say that. I'm just saying that uh, uh, you know the, these people at these. Uh, in fact, Saturday Night Live did a parody of these people at these meetings, and yeah. how out of out of whack they are, and how they suddenly you know they were going in there with uh, with all. All the stuff about the ivermectin and the, the this and the that and the ba da ba da, and uh, just disrupting the meetings when the subject of the matter was like, should we buy new school books? You know, the school books that they want to get rid of are the ones that you yeah, know, yeah, yeah, right, right, right. Uh, it's right. a country of virtue. Yeah, you know, yeah. Well, I got a story for you that I put up on my Facebook page. That Ooh. huh? But you got the usual trolls. Uh, no, I didn't get the usual trolls. Uh, uh, I got uh, got some people that were, you know. But anyway, there's this guy Grant Napier, who is suing Bonneville International, which is a broadcasting organization, and 50 John Doe's for his firing from Sports KHTK in Sacramento. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Napier, the uh, former uh, television voice of the Sacramento Kings, was fired by KHTK in June 2020 after responding to a tweet from a former Kings star, Demarcus Boogie Cousins, for his opinion about the Black Lives Matter movement. Okay, with his own tweet, and he 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 then answered him by saying, all lives matter. Yeah. All right? Which Napier claims he was unaware was considered a declaration of opposition to black civil rights. Were uh, you ever aware of that? Uh, well, I, I aware, I'm aware that the Black Lives Matter movement uh, will come down really hard on anyone that... Uh, uh, doesn't agree with their um, their position. Well, here so, here's the thing. Uh, he said he has brought up in a Unitarian church and a long career in broadcasting, including two Emmy awards. Says that Napier never violated his employer's rules or contracts, and nevertheless was suspended, and then fired for cause, despite his claim that his intention, the tweeting "All Lives Matter," and then he added to that. Every single one, okay. Um, the suit notes that Twitter did not suspend Napier's account of his termination. Well, anyway, point is, the guy was let go because hmm. some people were saying that him saying that all lives matter was against, you know, Black Lives Matter. And it, it I don't think it is. I mean, I think. I, I, I think there must be more to this story than, you know. Uh, I, I see people in fear. I see people putting up these Black Lives Matter flags in their uh, windows uh, mm -hmm. all over the place. And I, and I think it's because uh, they, don't, uh, they don't want to be uh, uh, pushed in a corner uh, by the Black Lives Matter movement. No, well, there's nothing wrong with the term Black Lives Matter, and it's a sympathy that I, 
I adhere to, I go along with. But I've also been known to say, but I believe that, you know, all lives matter. You know, that we should respect all life and to the dignity of each and every person, no matter what race they are. Uh, and I don't, but I don't see where they say, where he says he was unaware that the declaration of, um, uh, when he was asked, do you believe black lives matter? And he said, all lives matter. Well, that all of a sudden that was anti-black lives matter. That doesn't make sense to me. Maybe I'm wrong here and, you well, know. It's, not. It, it's bullying. What's happening is, is the movement uh, bullies anyone that will uh, use, any, you know, will, will not agree with them in lockstep. Well, all I'm saying is allegedly this guy lost his job over it. No, I don't think that's fair. Well, I don't think it's fair if that's the case. There may be there may be more to the story. I mean, the guy, who knows? The guy could have just been a real asshole and they wanted to get rid of him anyway, you know. I mean, that's always possible, uh, you know. But nevertheless, when I saw that, I went, you know, it's, it's like ridiculous. And it seems as though uh, Joe Rogan and Bill Maher uh, have come to his defense. Not um, Chappelle. Huh? It's Dave Chappelle. Now, I've never heard his comedy. Uh, I And you're I, missing out on some really good comedy. I understand. I, I like his position, which is he took a position and he won't be bullied. And uh, I, the transgender community, for instance, is going after him uh, big time. And, you know, he's he's heard what they had to say. I, I listened to him on a on a newscast. Uh, when he was interviewed, but uh, regardless of his comedy, whether it was it's good or bad, and I've never been exposed to it, mm -hmm. uh, I, I got to say that you know the guy is standing up to uh, to being bullied, and that's I think what's happening with this. Black I think Lives. what he's doing is he's standing up for all comedians. Yeah. Is what he's doing that he's saying that you know in the name of comedy, people should be able to you know say what they they want to put across. I mean, I. Uh, uh, I think that uh, I saw the special and I saw nothing wrong with it, you know. And he, and, and what's funny is there were twenty three, I think twenty three transgenders at Netflix who walked out in protest mm -hmm. against Netflix for running uh, uh, Chappelle. What they don't mention is Netflix has twenty three transgenders working at Netflix anymore uh, okay and they're allowed to be themselves at work and all of that and they mm -hmm. walk out we're walking out because of dave Chappelle. well you know come on i i just i i find that thing has got me really bothered well uh he's the uh, first guy that can stand up and stand up for comedians and say hey look this is comedy you know you you, you gotta get a life uh and talking about getting a life alec baldwin Mm -hmm. uh, not a good shot. Well, maybe he is. Uh, you know, uh, maybe he didn't like the cinematographer uh, and and the and the other producer. Did you see what uh, what was it? Uh, Don Trump Jr. posted. Uh, I, I I try to stay away from everything. Well, uh, did you did you see what he posted? It said guns don't kill people. Alec Baldwin does. That's true. Well, no, that's not funny. Hey, look, there's four rules to firearms. Look, 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 he, and none of them apply to Alec Baldwin in this situation because he has to rely on other people. They all do because what I heard today was that they were uh, uh, messing around with the guns and they were... Uh, yes, yes, but it, what Baldwin wasn't. Baldwin wasn't guilty of anything. Baldwin simply was handed a gun which he then was supposed to fire in the scene, and he fired it, and he killed somebody. Well, the the thing is, is when you, when you, the four rules of firearms, the first rule which he violated is that all guns are always loaded, and you don't point them at somebody. If they're going to shoot... If the scene calls for you to point it in a certain direction, you point it in that direction, and you assume that the gun is a prop gun. OK, you uh, you are not responsible for that. An armorer is there are people on the set who are supposed to make sure that these guns are fine. 
he thought when the gun was handed to him, probably every time he's ever been in a movie, they hand him a gun. It's been, you know. In this same movie set, they've had two other... That has nothing to do with it. It has nothing to do with the argument about Alec Baldwin, Phil. Well, no. Well, I, uh, wait, they, they, apparently, there were some some hanky panky going on in which unsafe use of these guns was being uh, done, but that wasn't Baldwin's fault. I feel sorry for Baldwin. He must be just absolutely overcome with grief on this deal. Considering he's so anti-gun, it would be uh, uh, ironic. How that, do you know that, he's anti-gun? Uh, he's uh, he's been spoken. He's been outspoken. Never about. heard him. Against the Second Amendment. Never heard him say it. I'm sure you never heard him because you don't listen to him. I never heard him say it. No, I never heard him say it. Uh, uh, But Alec Baldwin, uh, be that as it may, he's using a gun in a movie. He's playing a part. He's supposed to shoot the gun. It's a Western they were making, you know. Uh, And uh, somebody hands him the gun and says, okay, gun's okay. It's, you know, we've done everything we're supposed to do with it, he assumes. And then he shoots the gun, I guess, maybe at the camera or something, and he shoots the camera woman. Mm-hmm. And then the bullet goes through her and uh, hits the, uh, the director in the arm. Yeah, well, yeah. I, I think that uh, because they were horsing around with guns, whether it was Baldwin or other people on Baldwin the Baldwin was not horsing around with guns. Okay, let's, let's get that straight. Um. I I don't I don't know that he was. No, he, it, it, they have said he was not. Yeah, he was handed the gun to use in and, the scene. And by the way, the scene they were doing was a rehearsal. Right. You know. Do you think that because uh, there was a number of uh, of set people that left the set? Uh, I guess, uh, was it a toxic environment or something caused? They said they said, felt it was an unsafe set. And, yeah. But th- again, that has nothing to do with the fact that Baldwin was an actor and he was handed a gun and told, okay, now you're supposed to shoot the gun in this scene. And he rehearsed it and bang, he shoots the gun. There's a real bullet in it. And how a real bullet got even on a set like that is is a big question, and it has nothing to do with Alec Baldwin. He could has have, huh? could have sabotage. Could someone have done that on purpose? Well, I mean, there's any number of things, and we can sit here and try and and and. Uh, was uh, it the other prop people? Uh, was it prop people that left the set or were told to leave the set, and uh, non-union guys came in? What what was the story? With no, that, there, that, I you know, never heard anything like that. Never, uh, heard, never heard anything like that. But then again, I don't watch Fox. Yeah, well, uh, maybe uh, somebody was disgruntled. And- what, what, get, what's got me is how big this story has become. I mean, it's a very sad story, and I feel sorry for, uh, for, for him. You know, for Alec Baldwin, I, I feel sorry for the, the woman who got killed and for the director who got shot. Uh, but you know how it came to that. Uh, uh, it, 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 people know that when you have weapons on a set, there are certain protocols that you follow to make sure that those things aren't loaded. And by the way, I can't remember who got shot on a set. It wasn't Brandon Lee. I thought it was Brandon Lee, but then it was somebody else who got killed using uh, a gun. Brandon, huh? Brandon Lee put the gun to his did head. He, did he put the gun to his head? Was he the one? And it was a... It was a oh. It was a blank, but blanks can kill you. If they're that close to your temple, they can. Yeah, because, and it's a paper wad, but that's not to say that with the firing power of a gun, paper wad, you know. So. Uh, in, 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 do a lot of these prop guns, are they inert and they just use CGI to make it make the firing sound and to and to well, do. Well, you would these. think in this day and age they wouldn't actually fire those guns, you right. know, and then they would add the sound effects later. But maybe what they want is the recoil and things like that to make it look real, you know. Well, uh, yeah, I, I I understand what you're saying, but they they also have prop guns that the cylinder. Uh, will not allow a real bullet to go in, only only a, a blank. And uh, yes, but these, this wasn't that kind of gun. So. 
an original looking uh, 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 kind of uh, 1800s gun. Yeah. So anyway, uh, but I the thing that gets to me is how big this story has become. I mean, it's a sad story. It's just a very very sad story, uh, and 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 it, it's horrible that it happened to these people, and uh, and and it it's terrible. But don't you think maybe there's just a little too much of this story on the air? It's because people don't like Alec Baldwin. No, I don't think that's it. No, no. They're, they're portraying him in a very passionate, uh, uh, compassionate way. As a person in the news in the past, he's been, uh, uh, he's, he's been called out for being an asshole. Uh, well, he can be called out for being an asshole, but that still doesn't mean that he, oh, you know, he should sure. be vilified for this. He should be sure vilified enough. for being an asshole, but not for that. Uh, I, I understand, but you know, you know how trolls are. Uh, they they like to kick people when they're down, and uh, that might be what they're doing. Yeah, well, I, I just think that it it's uh, you know pretty pretty terrible what uh, what happened there. But the story is it, it's like it's like we had this thing with the girl and her boyfriend. The girl got killed in Wyoming, and then he went home and disappeared, and then they found him dead and all of that eaten by a crocodile or something or an alligator. Oh, they found his bones. Yeah, but he got eaten up by, by uh, alligators or crocodiles or whatever is in that part of the world. And, and um, um, but that story, God, every, it led every newscast for a week and you're going, you know, it's an interesting story and it's a looky-loo story but come on, there's more important stories to report in the lead of the news rather than, hey, this girl's still missing. Oh, well, we just found her and she's dead and, you know, that kind of thing. I've noticed what some people are saying is that they, they run with these stories with a white girl, mother kills her five babies or, uh, you know, and, and any of these kinds of things. And they seem to ignore uh, when it happens to people of color. Well, they do. That's true. But also, there's there there are two reasons why this story was so big. Number one, of course, is she was white. All right, all right. Number two, and it's the most important reason. They had footage. Yeah. They had footage of her, you know, being stopped by the cops and with her boyfriend and blah 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 blah. And because they had the footage, they got a big story. If they didn't have the footage. They mentioned it on the news. Well, she was a blogger, right? Uh, and uh, she did YouTube videos? No, uh, no, no, no. Of her travels? No, everybody have a drink. Okay. Uh, I'm pretty sure that that's, uh, you know, uh, what she had a following, and uh, she, was, um, she was a blogger. Uh, or not a blog, a video, uh, you know. I never did. heard that she had a following. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, the you know, know. a lot of those uh, a lot of those you know camping and uh, overlanding things. Uh, you know, uh, TV is so boring lately that uh, mm -hmm. YouTube is is the only place I can go. Uh, hey, by the way, can you stick around a little bit? Okay, let's let's bring in some other people here because they're all waiting. And well, they're not all waiting. There are three of them, uh, which uh, is you know, several it, it, it is is. Uh, you Wait, can you stick around? Mm -hmm. uh, okay, some whoever has their audio up, turn it off. They're all waiting. Not all waiting. They're hey, J Jeff. Jeff, I think you have your audio on. You wouldn't hear it. He's uh. Oh, he's got his. Well, what's this? Uh, YouTube. Okay, that's good. okay, so whose audio is that? I don't know. So can we make some corrections with Phil? Yeah, with Alec Baldwin. So everybody, all the, all, all the, most people are not going after him, uh, but the Republicans are because he's a Democrat. Typical bullshit story. Wait, wait, wait hold, next, on, hold on. A the next, the, hold, hold, the next, hold on a second. Hold on. Somebody's got their audio up. Mm -hmm. Jeff, I think you mm -hmm. have your audio on. You hear that? Yeah. 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 Take it off. Is it off now? Sounds like it's off. Huh? No? Is it back? Uh, Jeff froze. 
Uh, Jeff froze. Mm. Okay. Anyway. So uh, um, it was Jeff. So he, his, the little light lit up every time something in the background would say something. Yeah. So, anyway, go ahead. Go ahead. So, yeah, Alec Baldwin is a giver to Barack Obama, blah, blah, blah. So, of course, Fox News picks it up and says he's an idiot, blah, blah, blah. He should be charged, blah, blah, blah. So, the, the gun that was used was a bullet-firing gun, Phil. It was in the yeah. news today. The sheriff has determined, based on what the armorer said, and that the ant, sorry, phone buzzed, and, and everything, there was a live bullet introduced into the gun, and the armorer or the assistant director should have known that or checked it before handing it to Alan, Alec Baldwin. Alec Baldwin probably will not be charged with anything because he's not a gun smart guy. And you or I would check the gun to make sure it wasn't loaded, and, but people that aren't trained at that aren't going to do that. And so the gun, the gun is an old style Western gun and the cylinder revolves and the, it, the fired and the bullet went through and Alan, killed her. Just, just for the heck of it, What's the first rule of gun safety? But Alec Baldwin, once again, I'll say this again. Well, the first one is don't let Phil have an, a firearm. Yeah. Well, you know, the, yeah, let's wait, see. The one wait, wait, wait. J Charlie Wallace has his hand up. Yeah, Charlie. Yeah. Alec Baldwin trusted the people making the movie. He was handed a gun and told it was a cold gun, which meant it, was a, it had blanks in it. It was a safe gun. Mm -hmm. He trusted the person that told him that and treated it like a, he, like like Alan said, he's not a gun expert. What's he supposed to do? Look down the barrel and see if it's no, I mean, no. It, you you would open the cylinder would be a safe yeah. thing, but he's not a gun person. So I, yeah. I I'm going to make a little bit of correction here, Charlie, uh, on something you said. Alec Baldwin's company is actually making the movie. Yeah, he's starring yeah. in it. So, but, but they're going to go, they're going to go after the, um, assistant producer or whatever that was responsible for the gun. Assistant, di yeah. assistant director and also the armor. Alan, yeah. you have one of those guns, right? Can you open the cylinder or is it just something you turn and you put in one bullet? I, I don't have a Western gun, Phil. I thought you, you're, you had a, a Navy, a Colt Navy or army. Yeah, but it's a, re it's a regular revolver with the swing out, uh. Uh, cylinder. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. I, 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 you know, and so she was about 15 or 18 feet away from the gun when it went off. So no blank is going to go through her and into her stomach and penetrate that way. Right. But and, it, and yeah. yes, Brandon Lee was shot on the on the site in yeah. 1993. Not the same site, but uh, with a 44 Magnum. On a on a movie set. and it was on a, a movie, but set. it was a blank, right? No, it wasn't a blank. No, wasn't it wasn't a blank. A blank. Okay. It was a real, real, uh, real round. I thought I thought Brandon Lee was shot with a blank. I'm trying to remember who it was. It was pretending like they were playing. Uh, the, John Eric Hexum. That's it, Hexum. John Eric Hexum. Right, and, right. And he was killed with a blank. Yeah. Right. And fortunately, he was a Republican. Who, who oh, stop it, Alan. <laughs> Jeez. We who, just chided Phil for that. Who was John Eric Hexum? Uh, that's a good question. I never he heard of him. He was an actor in the 80s. Yeah. Well, he died in the 80s. He died 40 years ago. So, yeah. Yeah. The 70s, you know, I mean. Phil was still a Democrat then. <laughs> John Eric Hexum, yeah, and I when he died, I went, "Who the fuck is he?" Right, you know. Well, I still don't know. I haven't looked. Yeah, he died when a, when a uh, prop gun did not have a bullet in it, but it fired. Yeah, I think he was the one that was playing around and put the gun to his head. Right, Brandon Lee died right at his head. The, the somebody uh, else shot the gun that shot Brandon Lee. Yeah, uh, look this up. Uh, okay. How did Brandon you just start getting did Bruce Lee die from a bullet reliable too? Sources, what, what, did you, so. what did you say? Uh, Alex, me? did Bruce Lee die from a gunshot too? Or no. no. Uh, how did he die? He died supposedly of some kind of internal injuries or something. Yeah, he got 
I don't know if it was. A, a, I remember the there are thing. some the, rumors the stunt that done wrong in the movie. Something that went wrong with the stunt in the movie, I think, is what killed. Yep, me. I think that I think that's right. God, Tony, I'm surprised you didn't know that. Well, I was, I was, I used to watch these reruns on like four o'clock. We were saying like Return of the Dragon. Was it Return of the Dragon? After he died, like that's all you're gonna. I was small though. Reruns. Yes, I really did not. I remember when Brandon Lee died. I was bummed about that because I was all excited to see the film. Was, and the, was, yeah, it was the movie The Crow. Crow. So yeah, was, I said like, this should be good. And then it came out. I liked the movie, and it's like, oh, that sucked. There's been no. Well, there was a sequel, but I thought he would have had a decent career, really. Actually, yeah. well, maybe because it was just that one movie. He's a good looking guy, and he he. Uh, it's know. hard to patch a 44 Magnum hole in your head. Yeah, that's one he hell of a hole. He was accidentally shot in the spine during a filming accident. Oh, who? Okay. Yeah. Who? Brandon Lee, yeah. Oh, okay. Time earlier, modified bullets were shot off from uh, a gun as blanks, and unfortunately, they had been modified. Yeah, but, um, Who modifies blanks? Yeah, a blank. I, a, a, a blank is either a blank or it isn't a blank. Right. Can I ask you a question, Alex? Maybe you would know this. In I was reading an article. I was reading something on the. the the uh, with Alec Baldwin is it? Somebody was saying something. Do they take the gun and fire the bullets out and then put something back in? Is that how they do the? Is that how they do the? Uh, like they take the shells out or something? They put them back in for effect? Would they no, do? No, that what they do to... is they fill the uh, they fill the chambers with uh, with uh, uh, blanks. So there's several Tony. There's several types of guns that are used in movies. There are guns that are blank firing, that sound. And, and 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 look like a real gun, but the, the, the where the barrel is, it would be sealed off, and so nothing could fire out of it, and it's it's not even chambered for a, the size of a bullet. It's made for blanks. Then so in have, that gun, huh? what was it? What, in that gun, there was one live ammo, and the rest were blanks. In was it just not? We don't out? We, we don't know that. Oh, we don't know that. that. Oh, All okay. we know is live ammo was used in an old western replica. Um, gun and it had live ammo and when it fired the live ammo came out the, the old western guns are a pretty big caliber usually 45 caliber long colt or something like that mm -hmm. and they can do a lot of damage on the Lee thing they said that uh, and I didn't know this they said that somebody actually put a real bullet in a prop gun right Brandon Lee oh, that sucks Brandon Lee thing yeah. why would they do that to kill him, you know, you shot the one day. I mean, I'm not into it. It's like, you, how can that really even happen? Well, like, ever I'm since saying. the Brandon Lee situation, they've been very careful on film sets. Yeah, they, they've one. set a whole set of rules and regulations. And somewhere along the line, it was reported, as Phil mentioned, that earlier in the day, members of the crew had been using this gun yeah. uh, to do um, what do you call it? To do uh, just target shooting. Could be that they use real bullets and then they forgot to take the real bullets out. Yeah. And maybe they put in five blanks and that's what them. happened, yeah. you know. I'm scared of guns. I would never even want to hold one. Yeah. Well, that's probably a good thing. I wouldn't even fire it. I'd give it back. I mean, there was no way. I mean, I, even if you even if you have it in your hand, it's just not. No one could take somebody's life at any second just like that. That's. Charlie? Well, I wanted to correct something else that, 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 or expound on something else that came up during your discussion with Phil. Mm -hmm. The reason that saying all lives matter is in response to black lives matter is bad is because it's insensitive. If your wife came up to you and said, I'm sad, and your response was, everybody's sad, how do you think that would go for you? She'd be like, fuck them. I'm worried about talking about piss the fuck off. And that's what pisses us off when you say all lives matter oh, in oh, response to okay. black lives Okay, and, and, I, and I understand exactly what you're saying. That's why I stopped saying that a long time ago. Okay? But what happened in this situation is that isn't exactly what he said. What he said, let me go back to my page here where I had the whole thing. What he said was, uh, uh, let's see here. He said, Black Lives Matter, his own tweet, all lives matter. And then he said, all lives matter. And oh, yeah, all lives matter. Every single one. I don't see how that's negative or insulting. 
How is that negative or insulting, Charlie? Just, I mean, please educate me. I'm not the one that fired him. No, but what I'm saying is you were saying that... that That's still an, in, a, 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 an insensitive response to... If somebody's complaining about Black Lives Matter, they're saying the police are out there treating black lives like they don't matter. They are not treating white lives like they don't matter. They're not treating Indian lives like they don't matter. They're not treating British lives like... They're treating black lives like they don't matter. So when you say black lives matter, you're protesting that and have somebody come back and say, well, fuck, all lives matter. Yeah, that's going to piss them off. I don't care what the other things he says after that. You know, the majority... You're minimizing his feelings. Majority of officers now in, 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 in many police departments are black. And... Uh, it doesn't matter. They still don't think black lives matter. You think black officers haven't killed black kids unarmed? Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, that answers your question, Phil. Majority, you know, there's there's more crime in black neighborhoods than in uh, upscale white neighborhoods, you know, because it's black on black crime. If you look at Chicago and you look at the number of people killed every weekend, this is not happening by uh, by white. You know, you know, Phil, Black Lives Matter is not about blacks killing blacks. It's about police officers killing unarmed black men yeah. and I, 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 I'm kind of like ambiguous to the Black Lives Matter movement but I understand what it is obviously you don't and then and I think Charlie would agree with me it's not about I mean you know Charlie knows he's a smart guy he knows that in South Chicago I grew in, up in South Chicago right and so I was shot at as a teenager by other black teenagers in right. Chicago and so we all know that but black lives matter is only about uh, blacks that are unarmed that are kill being killed by mainly white officers and that's it that's the whole black lives matter movement I thought it came out of like Dallas where you had uh five uh Dallas cops that were assassinated and uh that that's that's where it was born from uh but let me ask you this charlie no, it was it was before that do it you, was long before that oh do you um uh, do you agree that uh, uh as a black person do you see uh, a lot of resistance to uh from blacks towards cops uh, when they get stopped uh, in a uh, in, on an automobile, or for any reason, there seems to be a lot of resistance, and that resistance leads to uh, uh, more violent behavior. Well, that's two different things. No. I see resistance because, frankly, we're pissed off about that. Every kid, my dad told me, I told my son. We all have to have that talk that whenever a cop stops you, you have to just be the most subservient person in the world because you don't want to get shot and killed. But you got to do that and as well. Well, some people are getting pissed off at that. Why should we have to be different? I went to, I went to an integrated school, Catholic school. None of my other friends in school, they couldn't believe this kind of shit happened to black people. It never happened to them. They were white. You don't think that maybe they didn't resist, when it, you know, to uh, you know, uh, show me your hands, and uh, and they Phil, in there. why is it you're making it the fault of the black people? Blame the victims. You, I, I, wait a minute. Why are you blaming the victims? I am saying this is behavior that I have observed. And uh, so, therefore, you know, I want to okay. know. Okay, let me say you've observed that through shall we say prejudiced eyes I'm not, no no uh, yes 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 and look even alan who was a policeman as well agrees with me uh well i uh you know how could you say they're prejudiced eyes when all i'm doing is seeing reality look to begin with i think that this notion that blacks do this and whites do that no poor not, wait a minute this is a is not a racial uh, problem. It is a class problem. It is a problem with people who are have-nots and people who are haves. 
The haves always get away with any shit they want to get away with. The have-nots do not. And I don't care whether you're white or black, there are have-nots in this society. And the people who are the have-nots uh, are going to have more crime in their neighborhoods. There's no I, question about it. But it has nothing to do with black or Hispanic or anything else. Let me tell you something. When a cop pulls somebody over, whether they're white or black, they don't see that initially when they're making the stop. All they see is a car and, and they got probable cause. Now, when a cop walks up to my car and, I, and I've been stopped, uh, I roll my window down. I turn the car off. I put the keys on the dashboard and I put my hands on top of the wheel where they can be seen. And I put the dome light on here now, again. This this goes back to what Alex said, though, Phil, I do the same thing, but it's based on yours and my training as a cop to do that because we want the cop that's walking up to us to feel comfortable. Right. Yes, and I do the same thing. Eyes wide open. Mm -hmm. We it, 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 dome light on, hands on the wheel. Absolutely. And you probably don't get much, if any, crap from the cop. No, no I don't. Right? Right. Okay. But nevertheless, I, I, first of all, I, I have to disagree with you. Yeah. I know that I have been stopped just because I was a black person driving in my neighborhood. I know that because nobody else is getting stopped. Well, I'm they, driving down the street, guys are passing me, but I'm the one that gets stopped. Let me ask you this, Charlie. When you have been stopped by a cop, are you suddenly in fear for your life? Of course I am. Okay. That's why There's I'm the answer different. right there's the answer right there, Phil. So, so to me, Charlie, let me let me give you a, a for example here. For example, if you were black in an all white neighborhood, I could definitely see you getting stopped before a white person. I don't agree with it. It needs to it needs to have a basis. Well, but, that's my but, that's but, my but that situation. happens. But that happens. I'm a middle class. I was a computer analyst for 30 years. I lived in a, a, a kind of upper middle class neighborhood. And yeah, I was one of the few black people in the neighborhood. Right. right. And I got stopped. Right. I, I I understand that. I don't agree with it that the police are stopping you because you're black. But you know, it just it, uh, it's unfortunate. And I'm glad to see that it's changing. Let me ask you this, Phil. Slowly, unfortunately. When you stop a car and you don't know who's in the car, you can't see who's in the car and you get out of your car and you go up to the window of that car and you see that the guy is white, do you suddenly breathe a sigh of relief? Oh. No. No? No. Okay. No, because that guy could shoot me and kill me just as easily as somebody black or Latino or Asian. You know, uh, you, you, your guards up constantly. I did police work. There were so many felons. There were there were you know because San Quentin was just across the bay, uh, and there there were there were more guys on parole that didn't want to go back to prison uh, in in the area I did police work than you could shake a stick at. And they'll kill you as soon as look at you uh, if they think that you're going to violate their parole or uh, you know do Arrest something. them or anything. Yep. Yeah, uh, there it's a it's a very complicated issue. You know, I mean, where Phil worked, most of the city is black. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, where I work, most of the city's white. But, you know, I, I, I can't recall a time when there's a lot of Latinos in Fremont. Now there's a lot of Asians, probably more Asians than Caucasians. But at the time that I worked here in police work, I you know, most of the time I stopped somebody that was white or Latino. Yeah, I um, I, I rarely uh, gave a guy a ticket that had a valid license. If he had a valid license, I said, you know, hey, that, that that's that's good. <laughs> you know, Ver verbal admonishment is what we call that valid license. You made them park it and walk it uh, or right. if you over because the license plate was expired. I never write the ticket for the expired plate because that was probable cause for somebody else to pull the guy over, right. you know? That was pretty common. I'm not going to incriminate myself, but that was pretty common. I think a few years have gone you, by. Right, you, you, if you make an arrest, the one thing you don't do is you don't cite him for 4,000 a. You let it go. 
for that today is uh, a, 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 an expired, it's expired registration in California. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. I, 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 I under, you know, I think, I think all blacks to get back to this and that for me to kind of end my, what I have to say, I think all blacks understand all lives matter, but the black lives matter movement is strictly based on mainly younger black males being that are unarmed, stopped by the police and being shot and killed be, because they're black and in the wrong place at the wrong time. So that's the same thing with the blue lives matter. Um, and absolutely. I, you know, I'm not, yeah. I don't disagree with you there. I mean, people kill. Cops okay. Let, let me, cops. let me, let me for a moment, piss both you guys off. Okay. I don't think blue lives matter. And I'll tell you why. Because blue lives have a gun on them, they have mace, they have a two-way radio, they can call for other cops to come help them. Uh, my life matters much less because I don't have all that stuff at my disposal. So when you say that a, a, a policeman got shot or he got killed, we all go apoplectic, but they have more things at their disposal to prevent them from getting killed. They're putting their then say somebody are, like Charlie. Cops are putting themselves in harm's way because of that's their job. And For it's perfect a, strangers. Well, they're being paid to do this. They're not, not being paid to get shot. Well, that's why I don't take that job. Yes, Charlie. Yeah, I have uh, two cousins who are cops in Chicago, so I don't want cops getting shot just because they're cops either. There were those two cops sitting eating lunch in Las Vegas, I think it was, and some one of these these boogaloo boys or whatever came in and just blew them away sitting there at their table for no reason except for the fact that they were cops. That pissed me off. Same thing happened in Brooklyn. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so, uh, Tony. You know what I was just watching on YouTube? I, I, look, I do searches for like the old documentaries from New York, and I saw a documentary on the 70s in the Bronx. And how these cops took that job up there, I don't even know. They were burning buildings every two hours. I mean, oh, the place, the place, the like place, the place, the place looked like Dresden at one they point. It did, Alex. It like, there was made a movie after oh, that, Tony. Yeah, somebody Fort shot him like an eight Bronx. millimeter. Fort so Apache Bronx or something. Yeah. Like yeah. My dad was a volunteer police, uh, not police, a volunteer firefighter in New York. He New was... York? 82 in the South Bronx. That that engine 82 had more runs than any other uh, uh, fire department in the country. I'll tell you a funny story. My mother was born in the South Bronx. And when she came home once, came here to visit me, said, you know what I want to do? I'd like to go back to my old neighborhood. And I went, oh, okay. So we drove up and it was the South Bronx. And of course, at that point, it was like Dresden. It looked like oh, it had man. been uh, yeah, sure. bombed right after World War II, and uh, they were cleaning it up, okay? And my mother said, what happened to my neighborhood? I said, she, mother, she mom, a, this was your neighborhood in 1906. This happens to be 1976. And, but, um, look, you know, this is what it is now. When my, when my father went out on a run, uh, mm -hmm what would happen in the South Bronx is all the buildings were all burned out, but they people would pull the fire alarms just to have the yeah. truck mm -hmm. go up. And my father was on the back of the truck and got hit with a brick, fell off the back of the truck, and that was the end of his volunteering. Uh, but, uh, uh, yeah, he still got his fire helmet. Uh, but Engine 82 it was a famous uh, uh, firehouse. They wrote a, a book called Report from Engine 82, mm -hmm. and it was uh, by a guy named Dennis Smith. And uh, very good. I think he's, I think he's, uh, he might be a new, uh, newspaper guy, I think. No, no. Dennis. Oh. Yeah. Uh, he was, so, you know, yeah. I, I just I just think, you know, unfortunately, a lot of black lives have, uh, have been snuffed out by racist cops. And I'm happy to see that we're retraining cops and we're weeding the cops out that are racist as best we can. And, you know, and it's it's just it's a thing that's well, that you know, I, I got to say something. Let's just remember that it is very nice that uh, we are have gotten to the point where we can start weeding out cops who 
who treat uh, blacks disproportionately because that's a very minor problem compared to what was happening in the South years ago when they were lynching people. So, you know, I mean, uh, that that's a that's a step forward that we're, you, we're that we're arguing about the fact that cops treat you, blacks disproportionately. You feel that the cops um, you're not sad when one gets killed, Alex, you they have the guns and the radios and to be able to call for help. Let me tell you, no, something. I didn't say Somebody, I, I didn't say that I wasn't sorry for them. I said that I certainly have less sympathy for them than the average uh, person who's unarmed, who has becomes a victim of crime and is murdered in the process okay. uh, over a cop who has all this equipment at their disposal. Okay. Well, I know you've probably never been around people that have been shot. They don't, they can't always call for help or return fire or anything. But that mm -hmm. being said, somebody that will kill a cop, mm -hmm. you, you, you know, if they're kill a police officer, that makes you unsafe. Nobody's safe if somebody's willing to arbitrarily kill a cop well uh, people are uh, nodding I, here on the show because that's true I, yeah. I i agree with you for the most part on that okay but yeah. i but i i still um uh i have found that over the years the police you know the amount of corruption that has gone on in police departments across the country over the years and i'm sure you're not going to disagree I'll, I'll agree. that it existed Oh, I'll agree. Uh, it has, especially here in New York, believe it or not, this was one of the most corrupt cities for cops. I think you're just going. still upset about being pulled over by the Miami police. Well, that terrorized me. It yeah, certainly well, that, terrorized that me. That, that was horrible. You know, Shouldn't have happened. And, and, was, and, and I was pulled over because they had heard that I had said something about them on the radio. You weren't even black. I, you were just a DJ they were, that they didn't they were, like. Yeah, yeah. Talk show host. Oh, and you know what I was oh, Wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, Phil, Phil's uh, trying to say something and he does no, get muted. I'm just saying that there was corruption everywhere in every business. Even if you look you look at the building business, there was kickbacks. The you, carpet business. The radio business. The Our crisis on certain days. The carpet business. Radio business, what was what, what was the radio business? Right. Payola. Payola. When Payola happened, by the way, Phil, let me inform you that when Payola was happening. There was no law against it. They 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 immediately came up with a a a antiquated law called commercial bribery, and okay. had it come under that. But up until that time, most people who were taking payola went well. I guess is the way we do business. Did it correct? Did it what? Wait 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 a minute. Let let Phil finish what he's saying because we can't hear him when I, when everybody's talking. Wasn't they considered corrupt? Uh, to uh, to to play, you know to be bribed. No, as a matter of fact, I always made the point, and I I never took payola, but I always made the point that these record companies should actually pay for us to play their records, because when we play their records, that's a free commercial for that song, and if we don't play their rec, if we don't play their record then they're not going to be able to sell that record. So they really should be paying for us to play them. I, I suggested once that we start a whole new format, and that was a station where the record companies could actually buy time and we would play their record. Oh, it's funny you say that. I used to call the, re the rock stations up for new music, mm -hmm. and I used to ask the guy, what was that band you played? And I would write it down, and I would go to Numbers in Forest Hills and buy the record. Right. I couldn't. Because back by, then, it was no the way, way. We've been joined by Brian Neary, who oh. I know exactly what he's eating. <laughs> that is what? my favorite treat. I have one every what night. What brand is it? It is called Keto Brand uh, oh. um, um, uh, um, ice, ice Cream, what do we call it? It has two, two net carbs in every bar. And tell them how good it is, Brian. <laughs> yeah, it's very good. Huh? Uh, actually, Adrian ate one by accident. <laughs> she said, <laughs> no, the Hagen dazs is for you. This one is oh, for I like me. Well, well, that's better for her. You yeah. know, the, I, no, not, no, 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 I want these. <laughs> 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 and they have the, their sea salt caramel. Really, oh, really good. Oh, it's Ugh. really, I mean, really. If you go to Costco, oh, buy a 12-pack, you're going to you love go. it. You're going to love it. I'm telling you. It, the taste. If you to topic, if you go to a food store like Safeway or uh, you know uh, 
I don't know what they got back east. They used to have Dyke Shopwell. But the vendors would pay to be up higher on the shelf. Oh, yeah. So, it still happens. It still right. happens. Yeah. So, so if you wanted shelf positioning, you had to you had to pay. Uh, the, oh, yeah. So that's I a, hear carpet stores and linoleum stores do the same thing. Uh, uh, well, I mean that uh, that's a uh, uh, yes, uh, Brian. What? Yeah, my my grandfather was uh, so he was a big shot at Safeway, and actually he had a house up in uh, Hillsboro, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, my mom was a teenager, <clears throat> and he got caught. And they made they wanted to make you know make an example set an example from him, so the IRS came down really hard on him and pretty much took all his stuff that he had. So yeah, they and that's what they were doing. They were taking you know they're taking stuff like he said like everybody was. The yeah. Italian Bernie Madoff were, were, were taking money and you know getting like you guys are saying stuff on the higher shelves you know better advertising for them and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. yeah yeah. But, so he uh, was but... a big shot at Safeway. And actually, he had a house up in uh, Hillsborough. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, my mom was a teacher. And he got caught. And they made, they wanted to make, you know, make an example, set an example from him. So the IRS came down really hard on him and pretty much took all his stuff that he had. So yeah, they, uh, that's what they were doing. They were taking, you know, they were taking stuff like he wait, said, like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Jack, Jack, Jack yeah. would you please turn off your audio from the show? Shelves, you know. For a while, I was beginning to wonder why Brian was out of sync. Yeah. Is he repeating himself? That ice cream. He's repeating himself, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Now, now we're okay, I guess. I guess. Um, you guessed correctly. Yeah, yeah. My fault. I'm bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, those are those are great. If you Yeah, very good, know. yeah. They're so tasty. I have, I'd say, 18 of them sitting in the refrigerator right now. And every night I have one. Them. They're too high in fat. For what? Me. No, they're not high in fat. No? No, these are keto. They're very That's low in carbs. They're very low in carbs. Uh, what does it say? Look at the uh, look at the pack package there, Brian. What does it say for calories? Yeah, 12 uh, calories, 180 calories. Uh -huh. What's it made out of? What's it made out of? What what, what are the ingredients? Cardboard. Uh, darkened soybean. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's why I'm real ice cream. Mm -hmm. I, don't need, I don't need desserts much, thank God. Yeah, but it's but really the, good. It's really good. Oh, uh, you know. And if you're yeah. on a low-carb diet, it's perfect. Just perfect. Yeah. yeah. And they taste good. good. Yeah, have yeah, you tried these? Good. And they're very big, like you said before. Yeah, they're big. Have, have you tried these keto bars at all, Jack? Listen, I heard you talking about them last week. Yeah, I bought some. I'm I'm a believer. You, really? Am you're I right? right? Is it great or yeah. what? Yeah, you're great. Yeah. You're and great. then Brian went out and bought them. Gee, the company should send me a couple of free packs just for. Yeah. Now that would be payola. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about payola, by the way, and I said there was a time when payola oh. wasn't really illegal. It's just they found a law they could wrap it around. I wanted to ask you, Alex, if the My Pillow guy was willing to sponsor of Gap, you let him do it. Alex, would you give me a free pillow? I, you, I uh, no, no, I wouldn't. No, I couldn't. In good conscience, I couldn't do it. Good. And I, 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 on the other hand, I always, I always had a, a feeling. I always had a policy where I would never prevent an advertiser from advertising on my show uh, unless their product hurt people. In which case, you know, forget it. You're not going to advertise on my show. But oh, if it were something that I didn't agree with, in fact, uh, at one point the Republican Party bought time on my show in San Francisco because they knew I was a left winger and they wanted to get to my audience, okay? And they said, well, why didn't you stop them from advertising on your show? And I said, because, you know, it's like freedom of speech. If, you, if, if we say you've got the right to buy time on our show, you've got to, right, to, uh, to, uh, the right to buy time on my show, but I have the right to demand that what you say in your commercial you can live up to, you know, that you're not lying and that your product doesn't hurt people. Yeah. So. Well, you think the my pillow guy's product hurts people? No, Look what it, it's a piece oh. of shit, is what it is. And uh, Alan, Alan uses them. 
I love them. Be good. I, I bought them before the gig. Guy became an idiot. What happened he to was... What happened to Brian? I guess we lost Brian. I guess he just went. Oh yeah. He probably broke his ice cream fell in his lap. <laughs> yeah, take it. Uh, yeah. But um, um, yeah. So anyway, so how are you doing, Jack? Hey, I'm doing surprisingly well. Listen, I dropped in here just to let you know that a uh, about two decades ago, mm -hmm. about two decades ago, radio stations found a way around the question of payola. You went talk? No. No, music stations started selling three-minute, four-minute blocks to record labels to play well, whatever I, that, they That was a suggestion play. of mine 30 years ago. Yeah, yeah. But the disc jockey didn't get the money. You see... No, no the disc jockey didn't get the money. The station got the money. Yeah. But with payola, the disc jockey ended up with the cash. So what was wrong with that? Because the disc jockey, I guess, is an employee of the station. The station should get the money. But uh, oh, that's spoken like a real Republican. <laughs> yeah. So if the guy's an employee of the station, he's generating money for the station. That's one thing. If he takes the money because he works at the station and sticks it in his pocket, that's theft. But many um, radio stations back then didn't pay their people worth a damn. And so they, the stations looked the other way. Well, wait a minute. Let's, let's, let's go back and look at somebody like Alan Freed, okay? Yeah. He got popped for payola. At a time, nobody ever said it was illegal, okay? And then all of a sudden, one day they said, oh, this is terrible what's happening uh, because it, you know, it got on the news and everything like that. And they said, oh, this is terrible. You can't do that. Well, what law are we breaking? And they went around looking for a law that could be broken in this case. And they called, they found a law against commercial bribery. And that's really what they busted people for in payola. And the fact was that up until that point, a guy like uh, Alan Freed was the most popular disc jockey practically in America. And the station he worked for made a fortune off of selling advertising on his show. So why shouldn't he make a little money for getting money on the records he plays? There were major market stations. I can think of one in our hometown of San Francisco. Mm -hmm. One, uh, I can think of two, now that I've put my mind to it, that paid their people $75 a week and looked the other way when guys took payola. K-O-B-Y, which was the first top 40 station, if memory serves me right, in San Francisco, mm -hmm. they paid their guys $75 a week. If they, they didn't like what they were getting paid, they didn't have to take the job. It what, This harkens back to what I think about with the building uh, practices in New York, the mafia and the kickbacks. And all what's happening is is uh, this the, the mafia was... Uh, was causing workers to have to pay to work so you had to pay the mafia if you if you wanted a contract or if you wanted to work and mm -hmm. you know i look at these guys and i say they're nothing more than uh th than leeches on society because who ends up paying for this ultimately it's the consumer hey and but phil phil look you know say what you will of course I will. What, 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 well, I hope so, because you're a bold American. But, but the thing is, these stations, primarily top 40 stations and stations that serve people of color, paid their folks nothing, while and, and they were not the leading stations in the market. Well, I remember a station in Peekskill called WLNA, and the disc jockeys there got $100 and they also had to empty the trash cans. Uh, I've seen that. I've seen that. I, I, I visited. That's what that business paid. If you didn't want to do it, then do something else. All right. But you never heard of a guy named Don Sherwood, did you? Yeah, of course I did. Yeah. Sherwood didn't make Sherwood didn't make $75 a week, didn't make $100 a week. He was making decent money. Yes. But the thing is, the, these companies, and they were not the big companies in broadcasting. He would advertise. He he was the the voice of products too. Well, no, no, he wasn't but, actually. Yeah, yeah, no, he wasn't. 
the local radio here. No, but he would do maybe commercials on his show, but he was not. He did not. He was not a spokesperson for any product that I remember. And I, I, I was a big Sherwood fan. Yeah, I I just remember him pitching. Uh, you know, uh, pitching products. Well, you, but you pitch products on the show. It's what they call a live read. And you would do live reads. I used to get paid extra money for doing a live read. I used to get $50 a live read because I sold product whenever I did one. What station was Sherwood on? Because I, I, don't, I, don't rem, I don't remember specifically looking to listen to him. Well, the station that I remember, because my dad listened to this station because they carried the Giants, was KSFO. Mm -hmm. Which at that time was the most popular radio station in ratings in the market. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they paid Sherwood good money. Oh, great money. I didn't want to go that far. <laughs> Conversely, George Oxford. Jumping George Oxford. Jumping George. And he was on the air at the first radio station I worked at. Was that KDIA? No, no, no. That, that came later. Oh, okay. He was on KSAN 1450. Okay. Now, the story on George was he was uh, a white guy doing black music on, on a black, quote, black station owned by a family of white Pentecostal ministers. And they paid him $75 a week to live in San Francisco. Yes. Opposite of what you did, country music, uh, a black guy playing country music. But we got to remember uh, when the time we're talking about, seventy-five bucks a week was probably not terrible. Huh. Usually, one hundred and twenty-five a week was what was common pay back then. That's what I got paid when I went to work in Sacramento, one hundred and twenty-five a week. Um, yeah, but you're talking about the difference between Sacramento and San Francisco. You know what I'm saying is, is that. That that uh, uh, when you talk about seventy five bucks a week, that you could live on that in San Francisco. In I made days. and when I moved to San Francisco in seventy four, I was making one hundred and fifty dollars a week, taking home one hundred and twelve after taxes, and my rent was two twenty five. Uh, you know, I, I don't know how I lived. All right, but to show you how it was, you know, Alex and I lost track of each other. For years, we both wind up in Houston. He got there about a year or two before I got there. He was working at the number one top 40 station in the market. I was working at one of the black stations in the market because back then, if you were a black announcer, you didn't do anything but black radio. Right, right. I was the highest paid guy at that station they'd ever had at 100 and forty-five dollars a week. Don't was that? Back. I don't remember what I was making at uh, at KILT. I have no idea. I cannot remember how much I was making. Well, that was so long ago. The only reason I remember it is because uh, uh, when I went to work for the James Brown Group in Knoxville, Tennessee, as program director, they were willing to pay me a hundred and sixty-five dollars a week. No, oh, really. Was, it was when when you guys were in Houston? Was that in the mid '60s? Six. Well, I was I was only there for six months. I was there uh, uh, in '67. I got I, I got I, there I got there in about '65, maybe. Yeah, I think '65. Yeah. yeah. You know, 150 bucks a week was was 140. But I don't remember how much I was making, and I usually I could tell you, like in Sacramento, I know I was making 125 dollars a week. But when I moved to Houston, I don't know what I got paid, to tell you the damn truth. These disc jockeys make too much money. I remember when you first came to uh, Camel, Alex, uh, didn't you start at 35K? Yeah, 35,000 a year. And yeah. all the Camel dung he wanted. And then to I got up, up to 75,000 when I said I was leaving and coming back to New York. And then... Uh, I got a, a call from a guy by the name of Bob Pittman, who was the head of MTV. Uh, and he called me, and I figured, ah, good, MTV's calling me, right? You know? That's good. Yeah. And I answered it, and, and he said, I'm calling for some friends of mine who are taking over a, a station in San Francisco, and they want to know how much it would cost for you to leave KMEL 
and go to work for them. So I didn't want to go through the whole problem of having to get out of one contract and get into another contract, so I threw out the number $125,000 a year. What are you saying? And they, me and they immediately said, fine, when can you start? Wow. <laughs> and, I, yeah. and I immediately said to myself, why did I ask for $150,000? Alex, would your agent get mad that you did that or no? Would you what, tell what, agent? what agent? Did you have yeah, an agent really? back then or no? Never had an agent. Oh, no. I had an oh, agent oh. once, and he screwed me like crazy. Yeah. Business manager when you were still a camel, right? Huh? You have a business manager? Well, I've had a business manager for years, Gary Haber. Uh, but uh, I, uh, that he just, you know, balanced the books, paid the taxes, paid my bills, you know, and occasionally would make deals for me uh, that, you know, I would call the shots on. But I did get a lawyer later on, uh, a show business uh, agent, and uh, it was terrible. He was just terrible. He didn't. He didn't. I, I made all the money. I, he he did. He just, you know, collected the checks. Yeah. So. Then that guy double team you. He had another guy that he got a position that was your position. Oh no no! I it, when I finally uh, was fired from Live 105 the last time when they decided I should leave. And I said, okay, I'll go. It turns out this guy who was my agent was representing the guy who was gonna take oh. over for me. Oh. Nice. And you can't do that. that that's, that's illegal. But he was literally representing the guy who was taking over from me. So it didn't matter whether he lost me, he gained another person. Yeah, that's like, you don't date your uh, your friends. friends. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So oh, I it's mean, never bothered yeah. me. Yeah, so I mean, I, 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 just, I just never had an agent, to be honest with you. Um, I had an agent and mm. never got a job out of it. Yeah, them. exactly. They sit around waiting for you to get the work, and then right. they're there with their money, their handout, right? Asking but for the the most money. money I ever made from a radio station was 125000 here in the Dallas-Fort Worth market. I had the third-rated, no, second-rated show in my time slot, and... And uh, the guy that was doing the morning show, who uh, was the big time guy at this station, mm -hmm. he made less than I did because I had been there the longest of well, anybody. Well, I'll tell you what happened with me in San Francisco. Between the salary that I negotiated and the extras I negotiated, uh, for instance, as an example, um, the fact that I got $50 a live read and I used to do about eight of those a day, so that's 400 bucks a day just in live wow. reads. And then I also did uh, comedy shows, comedy concerts. And I would say out of that job, I was making $400,000 a year. You know. Well, the guy that was our morning guy. And I'm not bragging, I'm just telling you. That yeah. The, yeah. yeah, the guy that was our morning guy came there from, uh, uh, I want to say somewhere in indiana he was an instantaneous smash in dallas he had never done country before mm -hmm. but you know doesn't matter what kind of music you you're doing you, just like mcclendon your old boss said you know you entertain informatively you inform entertainingly and that's how you build an audience they were paying him when he walked in the door now I remember what I, I was getting 125, and I was doing evenings because yeah, I've okay, been okay, there get, 12 get to years. It, get to it. They paid him fifty thousand a year, uh, and he was there, and he had great ratings in our market. And one of the strange things about Dallas that's always bothered me: the newspapers publish everything about radio stations, the ratings, who's making what. He found out he was number one in mornings in Dallas, and there were five guys who had worse ratings than he did who were making more money. Well, I mean, you know, I, 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 I always, I, I never ever let that bother me when I found out that somebody else was making more money than I did and I had higher ratings than they did. 
I just waited for my next contract renewal to come up, and I got even. Well, you know that you know Live One Hundred Five has changed their name to Dave. Yeah, I yeah, know. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, I'm stupid. You know. People say people say to me, "How do you feel about the fact that your radio station has now changed?" Blah 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 blah. Isn't that sad? And I went. It hasn't no. been the old Live 105 for the last 20 years, for crying out loud. Well, you were, huh? Now, you were pulling down 400. That in those years, that's probably worth eight, eight fifty today. Oh yeah, you know, yeah. But I mean, it, I had to, a, you know, the actual salary they were paying me was somewhere around 250 thousand. But all this other stuff added up that we threw in. I was allowed to advertise for free all my concerts on the show. I was allowed to, you know, to I did these live reads at 50 bucks a live read, and there were usually about eight of those a morning. So by the time it was through, it came out to about 400000 a year. So, the person yeah. that came after you, was that Dave Masters or Bill Masters? Steve Masters. Something? Yeah. Steve Masters, yeah. Steve well, like Masters. Alex, how I boosted my salary, uh... I did. Well, this is boring talk. This is really yeah, boring really. talk. Yeah, we got to listen to you on, on the intersection. We won't talk about this on the intersection. Yeah, talk about it's your talk salary about on the intersection. Not... <laughs> I, I've, I, it's it, it, it's kind of, I find radio talk just boring. I thought he boosted his salary by shaking down local merchants. I did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then you went out and you did those those in person things, right? They pay you to go out and do an in person. Oh, I hated those. Things. Those were the worst. I hated oh. those. I would. I had it my contract. I wouldn't do them. You know. Well, I was. Well, I never. I never failed to turn to, to take a dollar when it was offered, but that's how I boosted my salary was being able was being willing to do those kinds of things and do. So you showed up at somebody's door with a bunch of pizzas and. Hey. Well, you know how you pay, how you get an unemployed disc jockey off your front porch. You pay for the pizza. I, 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 <laughs> I heard, you, I heard the, I heard you jerk them off. I had a friend that did uh, one of those uh, uh, live things from the window of uh, the front window of a store. So he's he's in the store window, and people are walking by this guy's store, and and he's doing I, I forget what they call those uh, those um, on site. Uh, uh, it depends on the station. They got different words for them, but, yeah. but the guys that do them, we all got one word for them we use, uh -uh. and that's called, I hate this well, shit. Well, Brian's been very quiet, and Jeff has not said a word all night. Now his He's mic isn't on, and we can't it. hear him. I love what you're saying, Jeff, but turn your microphone on. <laughs> yeah. I agree, Jeff. Yeah, oh, really. Him. That was, that was Je totally... Jeff, uh, on, on cue, Jeff. Oh, oh, uh, ask hey, to unmute. There we go. Yeah, I, I, I can make Jeff say something. Jeff, I bought another sob today. Oh, my God. You're crazy. <laughs> See? Uh, older, older ones? Oh, oh sure. Yeah. Don't tell my wife I bought it yet, but I got it. The guy I bought it from is my sob mechanic. And I told him, but the first six months I've owned in this thing, it's got to live here at your place, or I'm going to spend the next three or four years living in your garage. Yeah, I, I charge my friends double for that. Hey, Jeff, didn't you just buy a, a, a sonnet? Got a sonnet? Hmm. Yeah. You're muted, Jeff. I, I, I haven't. By the way, I haven't owned a car in seventeen. Right, years. I, I haven't owned a car in seventeen years. Oh, kiss my black ass. Yeah. Well, I've, I've had a I'll pass on that. Okay. Yeah, really, that doesn't sound very appealing. It's very tasty. Yeah. You better get going, Jack, because I know you oh, have a show to do next. Goodbye, Jack. Do thing, He'll you know, be right. doing the intersection next over most of the same uh, little mm -hmm. outfit. Uh, one, what? three. What? The top sign it. Was it a one, two, or three? Three. Oh, nice. It's got to be a three. Otherwise, you're wasting your time. Well, I was once referred well, to as a good... Unless you had a one. I was once referred to as a good-natured sob, but that's... <laughs> yeah. Hey, that uh, thank swap. you, Phil, for sticking around. Appreciate it. And Alan, thank you. Always, Tony, wonderful having you here. Jeff, very quiet tonight, but always nice to I know, just see you there. I know, but let's talk about uh, Florida and how well you were in Florida. Oh, yeah, let's talk about that. <laughs> uh, Brian, I, I'm glad you liked the keto Brand yeah, very ice good. cream. 
I want to go get another one. And Charlie, <laughs> I know. I one. And Charlie <laughs> Wallace, thank you for being here. Everybody, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you, okay? And I'll probably be out of sync now. There we go. Uh, let me see here. Let me uh, uh, close everybody out here, and and I should get in sync. There we are. See, everything's fine. Anyway, hey, listen, that's it for tonight. Jack Bishop is next with The Intersection. Give him a call. Talk to him. I'll see you again uh, tomorrow night, 1030, same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Good night, everybody.